How did you get it into your head you wanted to raise the dead? All right. That's a fair question. <laughs> uh, thanks. I, I was... Uh, uh, All right. I took the Bible apart, put it in notebooks where I could understand it. Each man had his own notebook. Each section of God's Bible had its own notebook. I made a list of the miracles of the men's prayer life, the fasting, their marriages, their children, everything, how it was, how God responded to them and how they they approached God. And I chose out of the holiest of all the miracles down through the historical events of the Bible, I chose dead raising. And my wife, <laughs> my, my wife asked me to, let's start lower. <laughs> <laughs> Headaches, <laughs> different things. But I, I'm not that kind of human being. I, if, if, if God can do it, let's do it. How long did you contend for raising the dead before you saw your first dead person come? All right, there you go. That was a four-year fight with these witch doctors. It got really bumpy for me. I lost more than I gained during this time. And then I went out to a very normal day for me, get up, pray three or four hours, seek God, load up my four-wheel drive, go out to the mountain. And I get out of out of my truck, and this man asked me, "David, David, would you please come and pray? Would you for please my son? come and pray for my son?" And I, what's the matter? Well, he's, he's sick. Simple. So I walk with him through the wood, uh, and I start hearing this lady screaming. And we went right to that hut. I get there, and it's a bamboo walled house, dirt floor, grass roof. <laughs> looked me right in the face, pointed his finger in my face. My son is dead, now you do something about that. Well, look, I'm an eighth generation preacher. I'm not, my family's not new to this, but nobody's ever been asked that question. And so I went in the hut, followed him, and when I get in there, it's not like, there's not angels, there's not awesome. There's a little dead boy with a mama holding him, screaming. There's black magic warlocks. There's spiritist healers. They're my enemy. They don't love Jesus, and they hate me. I turn around, look at the mom. She backs away from her son. He's a nine-year-old boy. He's been dead for five hours. I kneel down over this boy. I've never seen it before. I don't know how to go about it. I know that Jesus, Elijah, all these guys raise the dead, but I have no experience at all. I just have biblical research for that. I laid my hands on this boy, tried to find a heartbeat, put my ear down, normal pressure points. He's, he's gone. He's still pigmented his skin. His coloration is gone. Started praying, prayed in tongues. First, because that seems like the best answer. (laughs) It didn't work. Prayed in English. Of course, that's going to work. Didn't work. Prayed in Spanish. (laughs) That didn't work either. Then I went into Indian, and then I just started weeping and crying, asking God for mercy, because it was really hot in there, probably 115 degrees inside the hut. Daddy, Probably an hour here. of prayer, they need and help. just all of a sudden, there was a heartbeat in the little boy in arm. I had a hold of his pressure point, and I felt a thump, and then it stopped. It, it, but what, what was the most important to me, which is all important, I had a little T-shirt on. I saw that little T-shirt bounce, and, and, and when I did... It really freaked me out. And I look up, and the dad's sitting there. He had seen also the little T-shirt bounce. And I said, did you see that? He said, yes. I said, it works. Yes. (laughs) It works. It really, it actually works to trust heaven and believe the name of Jesus. In about probably three minutes, maybe five 
uh, on and off heartbeat, and finally it got steady and strong, and then his coloration came, then he got flexible again, and then his eyes opened, and he's raised from the dead.